We are standing here in Galena in a recently completed CCHRC designed integrated truss house. And I'll be very clear, this is a high performance house. And when I say that, this, I mean that this house uses lots of insulation and it's very airtight. That means it takes very little energy to heat this house, but the trade-off is there's not enough natural air leakage to make sure that this house stays ventilated so that the occupants stay healthy and that you have good control of indoor humidity levels in winter time. So, in order to heat this house and to ventilate this house, we are using a heating system, I should say a mechanical system that does both. It both heats and it ventilates. And so we're going to explore how this heating system works and what some of the maintenance issues are. Every room in the house has one of these diffusers. Bruno, can you tell us what they do? Well, this is a fresh air supply diffuser. This is where the fresh air from the HRV, the heat recovery ventilator, comes into the house and supplies clean fresh air to each of the rooms of the living space. This is also where, when the, uh, the heat plant is on, when the, the breathe system is on, it supplies hot fresh air to each of the rooms in the living space. You'll notice here there's something called a butterfly, a bow tie um, damper, and that is used to adjust the airflow. We've set these uh, to optimize the airflow for each of the rooms in the house. We recommend that this does not be changed once we've set this. So we're supplying hot air to the living room with one of these, to each of the bedrooms with one of these, and to the bathroom with one of these. That's correct. Okay. And now we're also exhausting air from different parts of the house, aren't we? We do. We're exhausting air from two parts. We're exhausting air from the, the kitchen and from the bathroom. Let's take a look at those diffusers. Great. There are two diffusers in the ceiling. This is, these are called your return air diffusers. There's one in the bathroom. There's one in the kitchen. This is where the stale, moist, uh, odiferous air is sucked out of the house, sent through the HRV, and sent outside and replaced with fresh air in the living room, in the living space. And the last one here I'm looking at is there's another one in the kitchen right here behind the fridge. What does this one do? Well, this is a makeup air uh, diffuser. <clears throat> so this is completely separate of the HRV system. That's correct. This is used for whenever the bathroom fan is on or whenever the kitchen range hood is, is on. So those are big powerful fans that suck air out of the house and it needs to pull air from somewhere. You, want it to, you don't want it to be pulled from, say, the boiler, because there, there are toxic gases there. Or the wood stove, for instance. Or the wood stove, well said. So that's why we have this, we call this relief air. And so when those fans come on, the air is just pulled in from outside and goes theoretically right to any of those fans. We kind of hidden it behind, we hid it behind the refrigerator so that you don't quite notice the cold air whenever that's on. But when all the fans are off, you shouldn't feel anything coming out of here. But it's absolutely critical, and this, this diffuser here stays open, so we don't have any backdrafting risks from the wood stove or the boiler. That's absolutely right. It's yeah. critical that this stays free and clear. So here on the living room wall, I see three controllers. What can you tell me about the controllers? Well, this first controller is the HRV controller. This controller is uh, what's used to program the HRV to determine whether it's ventilating air outside and bringing fresh air inside or recirculating the air throughout the house. Pretty much you can just leave this and forget about it. The way I've currently got this is I've got it set to ventilate uh, for 30 minutes an hour. That means for out of 30 minutes every, every hour, it ventilates outside and the other 30 minutes it just recirculates. Uh, I'd defer to the, the uh, user's manual if you want to get into the more advanced functions such as scheduling or uh, changing other settings. This is a, uh, a simple push button mode if you want to use the uh, HRV and ventilate outside. So say for instance, uh, you want to rid the house of smells and you want to do it in a hurry and you don't want to open windows or use the exhaust fans, you just press this button. 
And if you press it once, it'll ventilate through the HRV for 20 minutes. It'll send that stale, stinky air outside and bring in the fresh air in for 20 minutes. I can always cancel this by pressing it one more time. And I have the option to go for, to do this for 40 minutes or 60 minutes. So if I press it twice, it'll blink twice and it'll go for 40 minutes and it, or until I cancel it. So tell me about this guy here in the middle. What about this one? Sure. Well, this is basically a thermostat. It's, uh, it gives you the ability to change the temperature in the house. So if I wanted to increase the temperature in the house, I just press it up to say 72 degrees and hit hold and voila, the heat is going to come on until the temperature reaches 72 degrees. Now this is a fancy temperature, uh, thermostat in that it has actually two sensors in it. One sensor is built in the body of the, the housing of this and it just senses the room temperature and the other temperature sensor is actually measuring the temperature of the incoming air. So there's a little sensor in the, uh, in the fresh air duct. And that just ensures that there's always fresh air, warm air being brought into the house. So if I understand this right, then at 40 below, the sensor here will still warm that air so it's warm and comfortable. You'll never have cold, fresh air coming in because this thermostat makes sure that the air is being heated. That's correct. It would sense the cold air and then call for heat just enough to make sure that that's not cold air blowing on you. Okay. So here we are in the utility room. This is the breathe system right here, these two big boxes. So Bruno, I'll let you take it from there and tell us what these two big boxes do. Well, it starts here with the heat recovery, heat recovery ventilator. It's the HRV for short. Uh, of course, its job is to bring fresh air in from outside and dump out the old stale air and in the meantime recover the heat. So it, bring, it brings back heat into the house. It would otherwise be lost to the outside. And then from here, the fresh air that we brought into the house comes into this little unit here. Now this unit is a, uh, houses the, the filter, so it's a filter assembly, and a heat exchanger. And so the idea, of course, is you bring the air in, clean it up, heat it up, and then send it out to be delivered to each of the rooms. So right here is where the warm air leaves once it's gone through the HRV. Fresh air comes in the HRV, gets heated right here through this radiator, and then heads for the rooms. Exactly. Got it. There are actually two sensors that call for heat in this house. One is at the thermostat itself that's in the living room. And the second place is what we call the floor sensor or the slab sensor. That's a secondary sensor that we actually place right here in this box. And again, its purpose is to measure the air temperature of the air flowing across the heat exchanger. So when it's really cold out and the HRV is bringing in fresh air, it may be, it may be bringing in fairly cold air. And that's where the sensor comes in and it says, well, if it's less than say 40 degrees, then it's gonna activate the heating system to ensure that there's some glycol heating to, uh, flowing to this heat exchanger. And without actually having to turn on the inline fan and, and ramp everything up, there should be just enough flow in this system to warm this up above say 40 degrees and then nobody's complaining of cold air being delivered to their bedrooms. So this is the boiler. Its sole function is to burn fuel from the fuel tank and keep a volume of water hot at all times, however we want to use it. In our case, we want to use it for two purposes, space heating the house and our domestic hot water. It all starts right here in this zone valve controller. The way this works is when there's a call for heat in the living room for the space heating, the thermostat calls for heat <clears throat> It tells this zone valve controller that, hey, there's a call for heat in the living room, and you'll see this little red light on zone one kick on. What happens then is it turns this pump on and circulates the, uh, the glycol from the boiler and sends it somewhere. When there's a call for heat in the living room, it opens up this zone valve. You can tell the zone, there's a, this zone valve is open because Great. this light comes on, or there's light up here that's on. And also, you can tell this little indicator here when it's um, perpendicular to the piping, that means it's off. And when it's uh, parallel to the piping, it means it's open. The other time when there's a call for heat is right here on the water heater. This aquastat calls for heat. Again, goes right here to the zone valve controller. It says zone two indicates this lights up and says, hey, there's a call for heat at the water heater. Turns that pump on if it's not already running. And it opens up 
this zone valve. Again, you can tell if this zone valve is open one of three ways, by this light here on zone two, by the light on the zone valve, uh, zone valve itself, or by this indicator. Again, if it's perpendicular to flow, it's closed. If it's parallel to flow, it's open. This boiler uses air from the mechanical room for the combustion process, and it's important to make sure that there's an adequate supply of fresh air to the mechanical room for this purpose. That's where this comes in. This is the makeup air duct for the combustion air in, this, in the mechanical room. So this, whenever air is used by the boiler, the air comes in from outside into the mechanical room. Now you may feel that when it's cold out, it's pulling in cold air, and that is true. Uh, ideally, it's going straight to the boiler, and since there's a door in the mechanical room, you should never feel that in the living space. So it's very, very important that you do not block this makeup air because it, it could starve your boiler of the air it needs and then you could have backdrafting issues, carbon monoxide issues in the house, and that is a bad deal. Every room actually has a master switch. This switch will shut down the entire heating system. So leave this on year round because this is responsible for your hot water and your space heating. The only time I might say you want to turn it off is if you're going to be gone for an extended period of time over the summer. Just make sure this is on when it could freeze your house. Once a year, you should have a, a boiler technician come in and perform a, a service on this that involves cleaning and tuning of the boiler itself. That generally involves a general clean out of the uh, burn chamber and also replacement of the nozzles in here. They'll also replace the fuel filter and then they will adjust the burn settings on this to maximize burn efficiency to make sure that you've got a good clean burn throughout the year. Just like in your car, this system has a reservoir for antifreeze. This is used to ensure that the boiler has an adequate amount of antifreeze in the system. So periodically come in and check and make sure that the fluid level is above the add fluid line indicated on the tank. Two screws and this cover comes right off. One thing that as a homeowner you want to be sure to do are to pull out these filters. These filters are, are clean, and there's not much to it. All you got to do is take it to the kitchen sink, uh, a little soapy water, scrub it out, run water through it so that they should be green again or blue. Some of them are blue. Uh, they should be clean, dry them out well, and then stick them back in here. And do this about once a month. Uh, the purpose of this is to protect the heat exchanger itself. You don't want this to build up with dust because it will also lose efficiency, and no longer will your HRV be 70 or 75% efficient. Now this can be removed as well, very carefully, pull out the core, and this is the core. Can you clean this too, if you had to? Yes, you should clean this every six months, and that's pretty easy, you just take it to the sink and run water through it, and get all the dust and dirt out of it, do this side as well, and then just sit there and let it hang dry, air dry for about an hour, and when you're done with it, Come back up to the HRV, carefully line it up, and you want to make sure that you match up the orange dot that you see on the front of the, of the heat exchanger right here with the orange dot that's at the top of this. And you slide it all the way in. Put these in so that the, uh, the, the green or colored side faces away from the heat exchanger. It doesn't matter which side goes where just as long as they're clean and facing the right direction. So what can happen is, as we're bringing in that cold fresh air, and that cold fresh air meets the warm, stale, moist air, you can have condensate that builds up, and it drains right out of the bottom of the HRV into these tubes. And this condensate drain is supposed to dump right into this drain right here. Uh, it, it's important to make sure that uh, that it dumps right into either here. If you don't have this, then it should dump into a bucket. And some houses don't have it. 
And it may be that one day you come in here and you have kind of, you smell a, a sewer gas smell. Uh, that's because this, uh, the drain trap went dry. So I would just take a cup of water and just pour it right in here. And that just cuts off the flow of, of the sewer gases in here. Otherwise, it should, if it functions properly, uh, it should just drain all the wet condensate right into this and the drain should stay filled. Can you show me the filters? Sure. So the filters, be careful, they'll fall out when you open this up. We've got two filters. What's special about these filters, they call this a MERV 8 filter. So it's uh, a, a certain, um, I'll say a label that you want to replace with other MERV 8 filters. So it, it designates, uh, I'll say the porosity, how fine a particulate this thing can filter out. And then it goes into a MERV 13, which is the, it, it can filter out even uh, finer particulates. So this will filter, filter out small dust particles and things that normally accumulate in the house, right? That's correct. Okay. And it's really important because it protects the heat exchanger from collecting up with dust, uh, oh. building up with dust, yeah. and it can lower the efficiency of your heating system. So it, in a way, it hurts you two ways. It hurts you because it, it, dam it you have, uh, I'll say, poor indoor air quality and it also can reduce the efficiency of this uh, heat exchanger. Okay, and how often should you exchange those filters? Well, them? I say check them. If you pull them out right now, you can see they're nice and white. Uh, I'd check after a few months, especially with a new house, all the dust. Uh, I'd check it after maybe say three months or so. And after that, it should be good for every, say three to four months. Pull it out, check it. If it's dirty, then replace it. And where do you get new filters? Uh, you can order them, I'm sure, from Fairbanks, and uh, you can pick them up at, say, places like Ferguson. So any place that sells plumbing parts like Ferguson or Frontier Plumbing Supply, they would have furnace filters. I mean, that's what these are, right? That's what they are. That's okay. exactly right. So as a homeowner, you really shouldn't see this room very often. I'd say periodically come in, check your water levels. Other than that, this system is very self-sufficient, and you don't have to think about this, except maybe once a month, come in here and clean the filter on the HRV. Every six months, clean that core as we discussed earlier. And then every couple months, maybe every two or three months, check these filters, make sure they're good and clean. If they're clean, throw them back in there and check it again maybe in a month later. And occasionally you'll figure out, or after a while, you'll figure out how long it takes to dirty these filters and what your uh, schedule will be for this house.